Hey there guys, Templar here, and today I'll be talking to you guys about antistic type of grenades. Or, in this case, Bronze Age type grenades from the... Well, I guess we might call it Bronze Age, but technically they're more of early forms of hand grenades from the very Bronze Age, or Neolithic Age, to the form on which we now know as the grenades before we used them since World War I. Now, what type of grenades were these exactly? Well, there were different types, actually. There were from the, uh, let's pretty much little start from the uh, Neolithic Age. Now, the Neolithic Age type grenades are more of like a booby trap type. These booby trap type grenades were not meant to be thrown, but actually meant to be, well, as stated, a booby trap. These would be a honeycomb type grenade, which would have been the earliest version of this would we still see during the Renaissance, used by the Mayans. This type of, well, device was pretty much with a uh, type of uh, form of co covering makes it almost look like a Mayan warrior almost. But if you attack it, what happens is you accidentally might unleash a form of, uh, <laughs> I guess we already know what might happen, is which it would be a type of, uh, well, I think you already get the point. As soon as you attack it, the wasps or bees or whatever would have been placed in there would later on come out and sting the living hell out of you. In the process, you might end up being poisoned by a massive hive. We don't know how many that would have been placed in this, but we do know that it was extremely bad to do in the first place. But, yeah, technically of that ancient one, that's all we know about from the Neolithic Age. So, let's go off to the Bronze Age. Now, the Bronze Age is actually one of the coolest versions, because let's start off with the Greeks. Now, what did the Greeks have? They had a type of, well, ceramic, I guess you might call it an impact grenade, I guess you might call it that. But this grenade was extremely dangerous, and would, well, I think you guys pretty much will understand later. These were very fragile, and if you dropped it, it stated you would burn to death. That's right, burn to death. This was one of the type of early Greek fire grenades. In other words, it's kind of like white phosphorus or a type of grenade that technically you don't want to get stuck on you. In other words, it's kind of like you get engulfed by a flamethrower. Now, these type of grenades lasted from the Bronze Age up until somewhere around the Renaissance. Of why we stopped using them by then, we don't know why. Now, as I stated, these were used uh, pretty much for throwing use. But as well, the Romans and Greeks, what they did also is launch them into a castle or a fortification. Same what we might see during the medieval period, by launching them with a type of hand uh, catapult. Now, these type of little grenades were extremely dangerous. reason because of this impact grenade is because as soon as it hit something, and as soon as it shattered, it stated that this type of, well, Greek fire, early form of kerosene or some sort, as soon as it, well, scattered around, what would happen is there was actually this type of match, this burnt match on top. And as soon as it made contact with this flam this flammable liquid, we already know what might happen. You pretty much burst into flame. Now, that's actually the terrifying part about these weapons. These things were used from, by the Greeks, Carthaginians, Egyptians, and a lot of other people. In fact, these were mainly used by the people in sieges only, and only used by the people that were being besieged. Though sometimes we do see on in later history events that later on those that were besieging the castle or something like that, that would be using them. Now though, these would not be used at the walls unless the walls were made out of wood. So in doing so, these would only be used against like say the fortifications inside the fortifications. In other words, like say a house for example, and this would demoralize uh, pretty much a lot of people. The terrifying part about this thing is, you don't want to get this thing stuck on you. In fact, it, it's actually estimated that at the Siege of Malta, for example, uh, many crusaders actually threw these down on Ottoman troops. And with a massive amount of troops, say, coming up a castle wall along a... The, for example, a ladder or whatever, or even a siege tower, if you throw these down on someone, you're going to burn, like, about, say, a ratio around uh, 20 to 50 troops, maybe. 
We don't really know, but I really don't want to actually get one of those stuck on me. But now, these weapons are extremely dangerous, and we don't see anything remaking of them, but we do realize that these things are still dangerous, and, well, a lot of times we do find them a lot, still. I've actually heard that some people have actually estimated to have found about, uh, give or take, like about 30 of them in one year, and that's just with archaeology alone. Now, this, though, weapon is still extremely dangerous. In fact, it's stated the Mycenaeans might have used it on the siege of Troy, for example. We might have actually seen it with the downfall of Jerusalem, with the downfall of Rome. We might have seen it used against the Celts in Gaul, for example, by used by the Romans. We don't really know, because this weapon is extremely dangerous. Now, it is technically filled with Greek fire, maybe some say, but it is stated that its potency was so disgusting that you can actually not get knocked out just from the smell. If that's true, I'm not wanting to actually find out what the hell they put in it. But now, let's go to our next type of grenade. Now, this grenade was used mainly by Egyptian troops, which is what which is also another type of either an impact grenade or a type of trap grenade. Which, these would be used in the sand dunes just in case if invaders were to come across their lands. The Egyptian pharaoh was later on reported to have placed millions of these throughout the deserts. In doing so, if, say, like I'm a Roman legion marching in, this was technically the type of grenade that if you stepped on it, you wished you hadn't. Because this was filled with scorpions. Yes, the type of things that would sting the living hell out of you. Or as well, poison you and such. We don't really know why these were made, but I believe that these were more of a throwing grenade rather than a type of uh, mine grenade. Because if even if a bug is stuck in there, it's going to be not working out so well for the insect. So, yeah. But still, it is stated that when the Egyptians did throw these it stated that it was used against the Persians, the Greeks, the Romans even, in which later on, the Greeks and Persians even used these against the Romans. So, it was still good weaponry, but it was pretty much used against each other. I'm even told that Israelites even used some of these weapons, and even Native Americans used some of these weapons as well. If that's true, and just thinking about how dangerous it is just to have that one of these thrown at you, it's kind of terrifying. But now, let's go to my next one. The one I've actually found, which was used by Carthage. But not used as a regular throwing grenade, these were actually used on their ships. Mainly used by the Carthaginian navy to use against Roman ships in the process. Now, these were known as snake pots. Now, you guys think, snake pots? Really? Is this supposed to work? Well, actually, it can. Because it's actually estimated that if you drop, even just drop one of these snakes onto a ship, it's actually estimated that a Navy crew would want to get them hell off before fighting against their main opponent. Because think about it, you get a poisonous snake, even a dead one on there, and you don't realize it, it's already dead, you want to get the hell, get it the hell off just to make sure. In fact, these would be filled with amazingly poisonous type snakes in the process, in which some of them nowadays are extinct. But as well, not to just Carthage, but as well even Greece, Egypt, and so on, actually did use these types of dangerous weapons on people. In fact, first Carthage used them, then the Greeks, and as well even Pompey's, Pompey's dynasty during the time of Cleopatra even used these against the Romans. So if you throw one of the, technically this pot full of, well, venomous snakes down on somebody, you're going to burn, like, say, uh, technically, uh, gets technically about, I don't know, maybe 30 Romans, that's the jump ship, maybe. So just think about that. You throw down a snake pot onto a ship, the snakes slither in, and next thing you know, they get the crew, they get the soldiers, they even get after the guys that are rowing. So in doing so, it's kind of terrifying. But this thing was not probably the best idea, because of the fact you pretty much might end up killing the snakes on the bottom due to the impact shit. So, probably not the best idea. 
But now that also brings me to another another one, but this one comes from ancient China. And when gunpowder evolved. Now when gunpowder actually first came around, we thought it was not a very good weapon. It would only be used for fireworks. Until Chinese ended up making a type of bro type of bomb that would be made out of a sack. This would be a waterproof type sack that would be filled with nothing more than the gunpowder. The gunpowder would pretty much equal to around 10 pounds maybe. Some say even 20. And even if you drop this say from the Great Wall of China onto say an um, invading group, you drop this down, it blows up, you can kill a lot of troops with this. And this idea later on was used by the Mongols, the Ottomans, and many other people. Though as well, it was technically a good waste of gunpowder. So pretty much a lot of people thought, it's not a very good idea to waste that much gunpowder, let's not do that. Still though, it was perfect to stop a siege tower. You throw it onto a siege tower, just on the bottom end, it blows up, siege tower goes down. Easy like that. Now though, that is still a lot of gunpowder. But pretty much just thinking about it, if this was so dangerous, I really wouldn't want to be anywhere near me near it because if I was the guy technically to carry one of these, I would make sure that the fuse wouldn't get burned at all. I would make sure even the bag didn't get burned. Otherwise, I would end up dealing with a massive explosive in my hand that pretty much kill me and my guys around me. So I can see why they didn't use those much. But because of this type of grenade came up to another grenade that would later on be used from the Renaissance, well, technically more like the very late medieval age, till the uh, pretty much somewhere around World War I. And this would be the type of hand grenade that looks kind of like a cannonball, literally. This type of cannonball was smaller, lighter, but it still was extremely dangerous. Reason why? It was a lit fuse grenade. And as well, later on came the Grenadiers. Now, if you guys are wondering where we get the term grenade, we gotta actually uh, give thanks to the Irish, because the Irish were the ones who called it the grenade, while other people call it the bomb, or the bomba. Which is, well, weird, because I wouldn't call this thing in my hand a bomb, because it isn't as big as a bomb. The explosive blast, anyway. But back then, it kind of was. So... Pretty much when the Irish called it the grenade, we started uh, adopting the idea. But as well, grenades were used throughout the kingdoms. In fact, pretty much there was a group known as Grenadiers. Grenadiers are both cavalry and infantry groups that carry these grenades. And if you throw these at somebody, let's just say you want to technically get the hell out of there. In fact, it's stated that Grenadiers were best to be used on foot mainly used by the Swedish during the uh, swedish frank russian War. Which, during the time of Peter the Great, Peter the Great was wanting the land of Sweden, Sweden was not idealized with that idea, and used these grenadiers as a type of blitzkrieg tactic. Which, if you think about it, was pretty impressive. In fact, you throw one of these grenades at, uh, say, a group of soldiers, such as, like, in a volley formation, this is not going to work out for that volley formation. Because it's actually estimated that if you end up throwing it into the position of the volumen, you can actually blow up, say, around 15 to 20 men. But since it was a p tightly packed formation, this would perfectly do well to technically kill off around 50. Not just with the blast radius or the shrapnel, but as well the fear tactic involved. But as well, this was mainly used to destroy pike formations. During the time of the Renaissance, these bombs were mainly thrown into pike formations by cavalry or infantry just to get, try fear and a wedge into formation. In other words, if you put a hole in that pike formation, you have a chance for the cavalry to charge in and attack. Though that's the thing. These bombs were later on used from the Renaissance and even into the 1800s. By the time of the colonial civil war or the American Revolution was over, it was pretty much done for. In fact, these grenades were even used at the Battle of the Alamo even. In fact, you throw these grenades inside, say, a fortification, it kinda can cause massive head trauma, plus blindness and more. In fact, these grenades were even later on fused with a type of, uh, what you might call a 
type of smoke device. In fact, Napoleon Bonaparte even used one of these himself to actually trick the British. In doing so, he actually later on used the real bombs to actually kill the British from the rear, while the artillery fired from the front. That's kind of terrifying, seeing as though it's already bad enough they're throwing grenades at you. But now, these grenades were still used even during the American Civil War. And by the time we reached World War I, they were still being used, but not by Germany, not by England, but by the French. The French kept on using these grenades up until their recent end of the grenade. Still though, the grenade was still used, and by the time World War II had ended, the Yakuza, yes, the Mafia gang, actually made an improv improvised version of a clay version of it. Still, these little hand grenades were uh, kind of, well, what you might call uh, primitive type grenades, but still they were extremely dangerous. In fact, it might have been just a big giant flashbang, for all we know, to our eyes, but if we were supposed to go back during the time of our age of our ancestors, we pretty much might end up thinking of something else. In fact, it's even stated that uh, if you take a grenadier or, say, a pirate, for example, and yes, pirates did use these in the Caribbean, they actually were stated to have had hundreds of these things strapped around their shoulders and actually pull what you might call a cord lit lighter. Now, a cord lighter is what you might call, like, for example, say I have one of those medieval grenades in my hand, and there's this lit fuse to this type of cork, which it was called that back then, but for us, it's more of like a sparkle or whatever. And technically, it's kind of like what our modern-day pins are with our modern-day grenades. You technically hold on to one end of either end, like such and such, like I'm holding on to the grenade end, I'm holding on to that cork end, and I pull it, and it's lighting the fuse. You throw the grenade, and technically, it could still go off. Though still, I really don't want to actually even hold on, like say, 14 grenades in a belt formation, due to the fact these things were known to fall off and blow up. Still though, it was extremely impressive back then, and these, and pretty much the grenades from the medieval to the World War One were probably the best I rather state. Still though, I rather go with the with the Greek fire grenade. But still, either way though, these grenades were extremely dangerous back then, and still are. But I hope you guys don't try to make any of these yourselves because it is because it is stated by law that I should inform you that these things can blow you up if you're not careful enough and you're not supposed to do these at all. So, anyways, guys, if you like this, leave a like down below. Also, comment and subscribe for more. Comment on which type of grenades or technically of type of firearms you guys want me to cover as well, and any cultures that you guys want me to cover in history. Anyways, guys, this has been Templar. Have a good day.